all right welcome back to the channel if you're just joining me for the first time welcome got a couple targets set up at 25 yards that first white marker is the 25 yard marker so what we're going to do i'm going to show you how to zero your sights so that you can shoot this thing accurately it's not a terribly busy day so we're not going to have that many ceasefires so after each volley i'll fire three rounds at a time and then we'll make adjustments as necessary my facility doesn't have the luxury where i could walk down and check the targets for each group that i shoot so i'm going to have to use the spotting scope the first step to this process though is you want to check the tension on your sides before firing the cmp recommends checking the tension on the rear side you do this because the recoil on the rifle can knock the sights out of alignment run the sight all the way to the highest elevation then back down two clicks press down on the top of the sight fixture to make sure that it doesn't move Mine still wiggles a little side to side, but there's not a drop. If it's loose, take a flathead screwdriver, turn the screw inside the knob right, one click at a time. Test the tension after each click, and if it's not improving, the new internal parts are needed. Depending on the tightness, you may need to push onto the screw with your thumb while you turn the knob. My example here seems to be up to standard with no free movement. If you have the old style sights with the locking bar, you have to loosen that Turn the sight to the number of yards that you wish to zero, tighten the screw, and then retighten the lock bar. Go all the way back down with the sight fixture and come back up 12 clicks according to the Army Marksmanship Manual, Field Manual FM 23 71. The U.S. Army's Marksmanship Manual in the mid 20th century was FM 23 71. It calls for a battle sight zero, meaning in order to hit a bullseye at 250 yards, all of your shots at 25 yards will be impacting just slightly higher than the bullseye. The reason for this is called point of aim and point of impact. Point of aim is where you look at the target through the sights in a straight line. Point of impact is a curve where the bullet strikes a target. The bullet travels in an arc, which means you're adjusting the sights so that point of aim and point of impact come to the same place at 250 yards on paper. FM-23 states battle sight zero in meters, but my range is set up in yards, so that's what I'm going to be doing. So for your rifle to shoot on target and hit what you're aiming at, your shots at 25 yards must be hitting 1.82 inches above the center of the bullseye. I didn't bring an actual tape measure out here with me, so you just use what you got. I've got a Gerber here, and it's got your inches on one side, centimeters on the other. And since I'm using the customary, you know, it's a measurement here instead of metric. <coughs> So in order for this thing to have a battle sight zero, you want to have it. Manual says 4.6 centimeters, which is just under two inches. So I'm going to call it two inches. So you want the center of your grouping to hit right about here above your bullseye. That'll give you a battle set zero for 250 yards. The reason for a battle sight zero is so troops have the ability to shoot a great distance accurately without spending time moving back and forth, checking the impact holes on a target that is 250 meters away. It's much more practical to walk up to a target that's 25 meters away. The first two volleys of three rounds are okay, but since we're not zeroing for 25 yards, and I really don't know why any rifle would be zeroed for that distance, I'm going to raise the side aperture a few clicks. FM 23-71 recommends the shooter adjust more than they think is necessary, even if you have to reverse course and come back down. The 
the last adjustment I made was to raise the aperture four clicks. I'm going to raise it six clicks this time based on the advice of FM 23-71 of doing more than what you think is necessary. The spotting scope tells me that my last adjustment was a little too much, so I come back down three clicks and I shoot again. The first six shots were outlined in red marker from the ceasefire. In my range, you basically have to wait or ask the range safety officer for a ceasefire. Out of consideration for the other shooters, I didn't want to ask the range officer for a ceasefire every few shots, so I depended on a spotting scope. The adjustments gradually crept up towards the nine ring on the target, but the third adjustment of six clicks was a bit too much, so I came back down two clicks. The final volley resulted in a large group, which can be blamed on marksmanship practice. But I can say that in this case, the shots are where they need to be for a battle size zero.